Welcome to Part 3 of the Charles Build. And welcome to my workshop and garden railway. I hope everyone is doing well. Since the last video I have fixed the smoke box to the frames and made a start on the cylinders. I have just sawn the front footplate out of 1.6 mil steel. Here it is in position, but you can see it is sitting too high. The frame fixing angle pieces need some material removing from the top. I am milling the top surface to allow the front footplate to sit flush. Mocked up with the smoke box. I like to listen to an audiobook when it's quiet enough in the workshop. The smoke box is held up by a wooden block. The front footplate needs fixing in position. Here's the modified frame fixing angle piece. This is a piece of angle for attaching the smoke box to the front footplate. I am departing from the plans and not having a separate inserted smoke box floor. This is the smoke box floor. The smoke box is specified to be all brass and all silver soldered together. This is the front footplate. The smoke box mounting angle pieces have been fitted to the bottom inner of the smoke box. I have just drilled through the front footplate and into the angle pieces for the fixing screws. Another view, showing the brass swarf from the angles. The steel front footplate had been pre-drilled beforehand. On the train shelf, with copper boiler barrel fitted to smoke box. A package from my friends, Little Metals, in Christchurch. Two sawn one and a half inch square blocks of brass, for the cylinders. Super glued to the frames to check the chunky appearance. I was toying with the idea of flues for the boiler. These are slices of domestic half inch water pipe facing the first side of a cylinder block. Facing the second cylinder block. Both blocks marked out for the cylinder bore, being extra careful to make sure they are handed correctly. The wobbler bar is located into a center punch. Just a light dot on this big block of brass. I'm clocking up the second cylinder using the wobbler bar and my dial test indicator. It's about a thigh and a half. Not bad. It looks fast, but it was only 200 RPM any higher, and the lathe was moving about too much. Ready for action. First, the center drill. Next, a through drilling a little over one quarter inch diameter. My largest drill, one half inch diameter. One mil depth of cut. Half an inch isn't quite big enough for the boring bar. So we make some extra clearance with a deep cut. This is the first cut after drilling. Power feed. Two thousandths per revolution. Taking a fine cut with my old boring bar. The bore is finished to size. Faced off, after boring. The first cylinder has been finished bored. Unfortunately it is tapered 0.05 mil or two thousandths of an inch under size at the back. 
marking out the position of the cylinder fixing holes on the side frame. Instead of large brass angle for fixing the front foot plate to the frames, I made brazed fixing brackets from 1 8 inch steel pieces. These are the fixing brackets on the drawing. Brass is fine, but steel work is great, and it leaves the fingers grimy. Marking out the two holes for the front foot plate fixing bracket. It took me a long time getting the position just right before drilling right through and into the, the fixing brackets. The frames were drilled first. The whole job was drilled through for 8BA tapping, 1.8 mil, and the, the frames were opened up afterwards for the 8BA clearance, 2.3 mil. This way everything lines up. Milling the angle on the inside face of a cylinder. A lot of material was removed. Here is the cylinder drawing showing the angle. The angle sits on the top of the frames. I used the step-by-step -step method of generating the angle. Vertically, a quarter of a mil at a time. Cut finished. Ready for deburring. Here's the state of play with the cylinder. Marked out. So that I can get the curve the right way round. The chassis sitting atop the 18-inch square surface plate. I had to lower the train shelf to clear Charles's funnel.